Good morning, rock stars. Welcome back to String and Story. My name is Holly and Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Welcome to our first official Tuesday of our August free motion quilting party. I'm so excited to be here with y'all. Now, as you are hopping on, first of all, there's something you should notice. I figured out, <laughs> I'm so proud of myself, how to be live both here on the Facebook page and also in the Quilting Rockstars simultaneously. Magic, yes, I love technology. Um, but as we are doing this, I'm gonna open up the Facebook page and make sure that I can, oh good, I can see us. And if you are here with me live, do please say hi in the comments so that I can greet you as you are hopping on and so that we can chat as we are going about. Today, we're gonna be talking about supplies you need for free motion quilting. Spoiler, it's probably less than you think you need. Free motion quilting is one of those things that we so often think we need all the things, uh, when in fact, we can get away with much simpler supplies. So give me a holler if you are here. I see Terry, I see Kate. Yay, yay, yay. Oh my gosh, hold on. Who is here? Hold on. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Come on, technology. Who is here? Jenny is here, Terry is here, Bev, Mary, Joyce, yay! One of you says that you haven't been here for a while and you have to catch up, and I can't see who that is, but I'm so glad that you are here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So guys, because I am excited, I'm gonna jump straight into today's presentation. So let me go ahead and um, let's see. I love it. I'm so glad you're here. Um, so let me jump straight into this. Now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler, and I'm going to repeat this again at the end because I want to make sure um, that, um, that I don't forget. So in addition to talking about notions for free motion quilting here while we're live, there are two very important links in the caption of this video. The first is a supplementary blog post. We're going to talk about, obviously, you need a machine if you are going to do machine free motion quilting. Um, but I have a whole blog post about what machine do you need. This is something I get a lot of questions about. Will my machine work, et cetera, et cetera. I've written a whole blog post that primarily exists to ease your mind because spoiler, your machine will probably work. Uh, but that link is in the caption of this video. The other link that's in the caption of this video is my brand new quiz, What Free Motion Quilting Motif Are You? I'm so excited about this quiz. It's big fun. You get to find out which of nine motifs you are Hint, if you don't like what you get, take the quiz again. Um, and then you get a fun graphic to share with your friends on social media. And I will email you a fabulous, quick little tutorial so that you can actually practice your motif and get stitching right away. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I see you all. Oh, my gosh. Splendid. All right. Let me jump over here. And we will get going and I will keep an eye on these comments. If you are watching from the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group, I will pop over in there a bit. So here we are, notions for free motion quilting. In this mini workshop, we're gonna talk through the tools you need for free motion quilting. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to find out that you don't need as much as you might think. By the end of our time together, you'll know what supplies you need in order to successfully free motion quilt. Now, a couple of things with this. One, we are having a whole party around free motion quilting this month. So if you're hoping to participate in all the mini fun things that I have planned, uh, you'll want to make sure that you have these supplies on hand. And also, as I've already hinted to y'all, Free Motion Quilting Academy is coming back. Enrollment is going to open the end of this month. If you've had your sights set on the Academy or you know that you want to learn Free Motion Quilting and you're just now learning about the Academy and you're curious about it, use today's video as an opportunity to make sure you have supplies on hand, especially right now when things are slower, excuse me, slower to ship. That is hard to say, y'all. Um, while supplies are slower to ship, you may want to go ahead and make sure you have things like a hopping foot, especially on hand, okay? So it's been my observation that free motion quilting is one of those activities where we think we need all the things, every foot, every marking implement, every base, every pin, every book, every thread, all of it, and also like every course, right? But actually, you can substantially simplify what you need for free motion quilting. And that is what we're going to talk through today. Marie, take the quiz again. I'm completely here for it. Take it often. You can change motifs all the time, right? You can have like a motif for every mood or every outfit. You're exactly right, Lydia. And then you can also get all the tutorials. Hint, hint. 
guess what? You don't need all the things for free motion quilting. Free motion quilting is a lot simpler than you think, babe. And I'm here to show you everything you need to get started. And please take note of this photo. I want you to go ahead and start internalizing this identity as we're going through this month that you are a quilting rock star. Some of you who are here with me are graduates of Free Motion Quilting Academy, and you very much own this identity of being a quilting rock star, right? But if you are brand new to this space with me, I don't care how scared you are of free motion quilting right now, you're rock star material, okay? All right. Having all the things bogs you down with cluttery distractions, but the right supplies frees you up to quilt with confidence. So let's find out what those correct supplies are. First of all, you need a sewing machine. Now, some of you guys are going, Holly Ann, that's not what you sew on. You're right. And it's very intentional that I chose to put my singer here for you guys to see because this is an off the shelf machine. This is not a big fancy sewing machine. It has a five inch throat space. So yes, I do sew on a big fancy sewing machine now. This is my job. I spend a lot of time doing it, et cetera, et cetera. You may have a big fancy sewing machine because this is your hobby and you love it and you want to make sure that you have something really, really nice. But if you are here and you're like, oh, and I'm still on something small and basic, can I still get started free motion quilting? Yes. And I expand on this greatly in that blog post that I mentioned at the top. And the link to that is in the caption of this video. So if you're nervous about the ability of your machine, please go refer to that. I've had students achieve incredible free motion quilting success on everything from antique singers to vintage Kenmore's to off the shelf $99 brother machines to big old fancy long arms and everything in between. All right. The biggest thing, and I mention it here, is to make sure that your machine is in good working order. It has been recently serviced, cleaned, oiled, and that you have a well-fitting foot. Now, Unfortunately, I'm not a foot expert. I'm going to be really honest. This is a very like standard universal foot. You can get these on Amazon. They're surprisingly affordable. Um, but if you have a nicer, fancier machine, you're definitely going to want to talk to your dealer. If you have an off the shelf machine like this Singer, this is Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. Fabulous little machine, by the way. Uh, something like a kind of universal hopping foot will work, all right? But if you have any questions about that, I do recommend talking to your local shop or dealership because I'm not an expert on all the feet for all the machines, all right? Um, if you have trouble finding the foot that you need, we're about to talk about feet, so I'm jumping ahead, see? Um, do feel free to reach out to me and I will help connect you with someone that can get you the info you need, all right? So next up, presser foot. Of course that I jumped forward, right, Bev? Oh, I love that Bev remembered that my singer was named Festus. His twin is Archimedes, because I had two, for what that's worth. Um, your presser foot will likely be a hopping foot, but it could also be a ruler foot or a darning foot or a spoon foot. Y'all have seen my metal ruler foot that's on my Juki right now. I just showed you guys this hopping foot. I also have this glide foot or a spoon foot. You might also find a metal hopping foot. There's a lot of options, right? So again, check with what your local shop has, check with your dealership. Um, the biggest thing is to make sure that you get the proper shank length, whether it's like a low shank or a high shank. Again, I'm not an expert on this, but I can help you find the information you need if you're stuck, okay? Next up, needles. I like a size 14 universal. It's easy, it's easy to acquire. Uh, they're affordable. And I like that then I don't feel any kind of way about changing my needle often because the biggest thing is making sure you have a fresh needle and that you're changing it frequently, right? If you have issues with a size 14, you can go up to a 16 or even an 18. Working on the Juki because it's an industrial high-speed machine, I do tend to work with a 16 or an 18 because I need the larger eye. Um, so you could try a top stitch needle. You could try a low friction needle um, if you're having problems, especially with thread sh like shredding. But usually that has less to do with the needle and more to do with tension. OK, so if you're sewing on a relatively basic machine, not something that's like a high speed juki, start with a size 14 universal and update from there. Adjust, figure out what you like best. The biggest thing here is recognizing that you probably have a size 14 universal needle right in your sewing room right now. So you don't need to go buy something special just to get started free motion quilting. Thread. Guys, I am extremely monogamous when it comes to thread. Orophil, 2600, 50 weight. Okay, admittedly, I use other colors, but like there's a reason I own a cone of the stuff, right? Um, if you are new to free motion quilting, I do recommend that you invest in some really good thread sooner rather than later because it'll solve a lot of tension problems. Um, I've had many, many students who struggle, struggle, struggle with tension. They finally kind of roll their eyes at me and they're like, I'll pay the money for the good thread. And then they're like, oh my gosh, like, it solved my problems. Now, if you don't want to be as monogamous to Orofel as I am, the biggest thing is to look for a high quality 50 weight cotton thread and a color that matches your quilt. 
but honestly, like, why not go with the best? <laughs> shameless plug, shameless plug, guys. You guys know I love my Aurifil, uh, but I do strongly prefer cotton thread when I'm working on quilts. I like to use natural fiber batting. I'm using cotton fabric. <laughs> my kid is knocking on the door. And then I like to use cotton thread with it because all those natural fibers means that even if I quilt my quilt to death, when it goes through the washing machine, it's going to be nice and soft and scrunchy, okay? Those feathers are galls. Oh my gosh, Kate, I just saw that comment. Yay. I have to, these are the feathers she's talking about. Uh, spoiler, I teach you how to quilt these inside Free Motion Quilting Academy. All right, gloves. I'm all about the gloves. Now, my gloves were a freebie that I got with a magazine and they look like this and they're fun on camera. Uh, but the gloves that I actually recommend are the Fonz and Porter quilting gloves. They're cotton, so they're nice and breathable. They're not gonna make your hands sweaty or itchy um, and they fit nice and close. It is important to have gloves that fit closely so that you do not quilt them to your quilt. Ask me how I know. You also want to know where your finger is inside your gloves because you also don't want to quilt your finger to your quilt. And if your gloves are not snug fitting, bad things can happen. Okay, so have nice fitted gloves. I like the Fonz and Porter cotton quilting gloves. They help reduce hand fatigue, protect the quilt from oils and dirt, um, just generally give you a better grip on things. Um, if you want something that's easy and accessible, literally you can go down to the local dollar store and get a nice clean pair of gardening gloves. But the biggest thing, like I said, is making sure that they do fit nice and close so that you don't have a stray bits that can get stitched down or lose track of where your hand is inside, um, especially if you're working with a hopping foot. There's just enough room under a hopping foot that accidents can happen. We want to prevent those in every way possible, right? Next up, practice sandwich. I like uh, fat quarter size practice sandwiches, again, with a natural fiber batting, usually cotton. Dig to the back of your stash and pick the stuff that needs a job. Oh, I love it. Okay, sidebar, Kate is like hollering about Orifil 58 as well, because yes, it's the best. Um, dig to the back of your stash. I have, you know, nice, pretty navy fabric here, right? Because I was taking pretty pictures. But when you're practicing free motion quilting, like dig out the weird stuff that you're like, why did I buy this? Like, what, what is this doing in my stash? This is the perfect opportunity to use that fabric, okay? Use up the weird scrap pieces of batting. Um, use up the weird, like, bits that get trimmed off the edges of quilts, all of that. Speaking of practice, you're also going to want pen and paper uh, to make sure that you have an opportunity to doodle before you get stitching. This warms you up and improves your hand-eye coordination. And paper is a lot cheaper than fabric, so it's easier to learn how to shape a motif by doodling it. All right. So guys, that's the kind of big picture list of the stuff that you need, right? You need a machine, you need needles, you need thread, you need gloves, you need practice sandwich, you need a hopping foot, you need some pen and paper. These are very quick things, right? But they're not the most important thing, right? Everything we've talked about, there's kind of this scale, right? From like the very um, accessible, affordable end of like fresh off the big box store shelf to the very custom fancy end, right? But it doesn't matter where your machine or your supplies fall on that spectrum if you don't have this next thing. This next bit is the most important, all right? Notions are all well and good, but there's something else that you need even more if you're going to free motion quilt. You have to want it, okay? There are plenty of people in the marketplace that's gonna that are going to tell you what is and is not achievable for you as a beginner free motion quilter, all right? They're going to be like, oh, feathers are too hard. Oh, don't custom quilt. That's too overwhelming. Listen to me. I am here to tell you that your wildest free motion quilting dreams can come true. You, as I told you at the beginning, are rock star material. And do you know what quilting rock stars do? They quilt their quilts exactly how they want to. And you may want to quilt with an all over design. You may be like, I'm all about simple and squishy. You may want to freaking custom quilt the heck out of that thing and want a ribbon at Paducah. And I am here for both of those things. And you are capable of both of those things. All right. I will tell you, it's a learning curve, right? Brian Tracy says you can only grow if you're willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable when you try something new. Like, of course, it's going to feel awkward when you're first getting started. If you took my quiz over the weekend and you got that first tutorial and actually tried to quote your motif, you might have been like, Holly Ann, you're crazy. This isn't working. But here's the thing, Rockstar, that's your starting point, right? You're going to get better and better and better and more and more confident and more and more skilled from there. You've started the process of becoming the quilting rock star that you want to be 
But maybe there's someone who said like, no, that's too hard. Like, don't even try. I'm here for you to try and I'm here for you to succeed. Okay. Oh my gosh, I love all these tips and tricks in the comments. So here's the deal. If you're excited for this, I want you to drop some hearts down um, on this video. I'm going to take a minute and check caption or check comments. Be dropping your questions in the comments as I'm checking them. All right. So let me just read a few of these um, out to you. So uh, Kate reminds everyone that they can also use 58 Orifil for machine embroidery. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Helen says that she uses her gloves for regular sewing and piecing too. I love that because it keeps all the oil and dirt and all the things off your fabric. So here for that. Lydia says, take your paper and pencil everywhere. Practice whenever you have a moment. Yeah, because all of a sudden quilting can go on the road, right? Like you can be sitting wherever, getting a little extra practice in. Um, love these hearts, guys. Lynn says, love my Orifil. Um, Other thread has been demoted. That's hilarious. Oh my gosh, Hillary, I am here for this pep talk. I am here to pep talk you, babe. Yes, you too, Kate. I love it. All right, let me get this other video up. I want to go check on my rock stars who are over in the Quilting Rock Stars group. Because guys, for the first time ever, I'm I'm in two places at once. <laughs> Sorry, I'm deriving entirely too much entertainment out of that. All right, let me make sure that I answer any questions that are going on over here. I love it. Let's see. Hey, Ma, I see you. I see you. Um, Sue says her Viking loves DDR. Wait, Sue, what tips and tricks are you not seeing? Sue, there you are. It was you who said that you have a lot to catch up on. All right, so I couldn't see names from the Facebook group. Oh, I'm so glad to see you guys here. All right, Sue, I don't, I'm not sure what you're not seeing. I'm so sorry. I want you to see them. All right, let me pop over here, make sure I'm not missing any questions because I want to make sure I get your questions answered before I give you this next bit. Cindy says, I love free motion quilting and custom quilting. All right, guys, so here's the big thing. You are a quilting rock star. I want that to be your biggest takeaway from today. And in order to be a quilting rock star, you don't need a whole bunch of fancy stuff, right? So if you're going, okay, yes, I do want to learn to free motion quilt. I want to know how to take the next steps with this. Guys, the next step is so fun. Go take the quiz. Like now that you know what supplies you need, here's how you get started. Go take my quiz. What free motion quilting motif are you? Find out your motif, share your results with your friends and enjoy your free tutorial. It's the perfect introduction just to begin bridging that gap. And I designed a quiz to be your first step because I know free motion quilting can feel overwhelming and frightening. And what better way to counter that with the, than with a little bit of fun and excitement, all right? So you'll find the quiz at stringandstory.com forward slash FMQ quiz, or there's a link in the caption of this video because like, why would I leave you hanging without a hot link? Am I right? All right, so I'm not sure what tips and tricks that you're, I'm not sure what tips and tricks you're trying to see, babe. But I will certainly check on that and answer that question when I am done. Oh, the tip. Okay, so Sue, I'm in two places at once. Now I'm tracking with you. Um, yeah, so I'm in two places at once. I'm on the Facebook Live, uh, Facebook Live on my page, and I'm also in the Quilting Rockstar. So that's why I'm reading the tips and tricks that people are saying out loud. All right, Kate solved it. Marilyn, old dog ready for new tricks. I am completely, completely here for this. I love it. Renee, I'm so glad you're here. Splendid. So guys, let me come over here. I'm going to pop this back down. Let's hide this. Oh, did that whole bar show up that whole time? Gosh, I hope not. Guys, thank you so much for being here for this quick run through of what you need for free motion quilting. Just as a review, you need a machine. You need some fresh needles, some thread, a presser foot that's either a hopping foot or a ruler foot, a free motion quilting specific foot. Uh, you need some gloves. You need some paper and pencil. And I'm forgetting one. What am I missing? Practice sandwiches. You need practice sandwiches. So seven easy things, most of which you probably already have in your sewing room. My guess is that if there's two things you need, you probably need the presser foot, your hopping foot for free motion quilting, and some gloves. So if you are excited to be part of this free motion quilting party over the next few weeks, uh, hint, hint, there's going to be some hands-on opportunities to start practicing here very, very soon. Go ahead and make sure that you set the wheels in motion to get those supplies you need so that you can participate and begin to see how you really can 
uh, become a free motion quilting rock star. I'm so excited for the weeks ahead. I'm excited that free motion quilting Academy is coming back and I'm excited for how many of you guys have been taking the quiz. So if you're excited about this party too, and you've not yet taken the quiz, be sure to go do that now. If you've already taken the quiz, go do it again and see what you get this time and get a different tutorial. All right, guys have an absolutely fabulous Tuesday and I will see you guys on Friday over on Instagram for lunch break. Until then, have a fabulous week.